Thank you for staying with us. It's time now to take a look at stories making headlines on the front page of Nigeria newspapers. And I begin with the Nation newspaper. The major story here says, Governors, the NSA join forces to battle insecurity food crisis. Governors, NSA join forces to battle insecurity food crisis. Panel raised on police reform. PDP governors, OK, state police. And then another story here says, Access Bank Workers, we will sustain Uyghur's legacies. Access Bank Workers, we will sustain Uyghur's legacies. Nigeria's oil production up by 177,000 barrels per day in January. And at the top corner, we paid $6.2 million on a mafialist directive, says CBN director. And years after one billion naira deposit, they might yet to get aircraft. Fleeing kidnappers in Ikiti move to Ondo, Amotekun claims. Labour Party treasurer seeks probe of misused parties 3.5 billion naira cash. And those are some of the stories you find on the front page of the Nation newspaper. We move now to the front page of the Leadership newspaper. The major story here says hardship, families struggling to meet daily needs. Food, prices of food stuff rise by 70%. Food inflation hits 33.98%. Barao Hills, Tinubu, over release of grains. And uh, at the corner there, Edo poll, 960 delegates to affirm a PC primary election. Relief as federal varsity workers get January salary. Crisis rocks Labour Party over three billion naira campaign funds. Afghan Tinubu hosts Super Eagles today. And uh, at the top corner, California suffers 13 earthquakes in 25 minutes. Some of the stories you find on the front page of the leadership newspaper. To the Daily Trust now, there's hardship in the land, says Kanu Emir. Things will get better, President's wife says. Nigeria almost becoming Venezuela, PDP governor is saying. Labor malls, one million naira as new minimum wage. Citizens suffering from Buhari's policies, or Shomali, is saying. Petrol price hits 700 naira per liter in Sakwoto, Maiduguri, others. Uh, federal government resolves January salary delay, lots of workers' patients. And $6.2 million paid to 2023 election observers under Emifile, CBN officials, tells court. We won't return to ECOWAS. Niger, gentle leader, vows. Some of the stories on the front page of the Daily Trust. To the Blueprint newspaper now, the major story here. A Niger retailers, residents to Obago, enforce move against Kanu Lagos Ibadan traders to avert food crisis. Prices shoot up by 200%. Market authorities blame banditry fuel subsidy removal. Uh, Emia Bayero says people are hungry. Canada traders crash prices. Another story here, why we are not opposed to subsidy removal. PDP governors partner federal government to avoid destruction. Call for state police. Now police arrest over 307 hoodlums in Abuja. And... Uh, at the top corner there, stay clear of Adamawa Warehouses, Venturi Wands, Hoodlums. And uh, $4.5 billion in foreign reserves unaccounted for during COVID years audit report. All right, uh, some of the stories you find on the front page of the Blueprint newspaper to the Nigerian News Direct. The major story is still talking about the high cost of living. And PDP governors uh, deride Tinubu's policies, say Nigeria applying route of Venezuela. At the top corner, Access Holdings appoints Bolaji Agwede as acting CEO. And uh, the story there, Labour threatens to shut down ports over 50% deduction from revenue. All right, some of the stories you find on the front page of the Nigeria News Direct to the Vanguard now. Buhari's reckless policies triggered current hardships on Usi Oshomale. And the riders there say previous administration adamant about our appeal for corrective measures not willing to 
take advice, Anusi says. I lamented loudly what I saw as reckless policies designed to dehumanize the population of Shomali. Buhari's aides keep mum. And uh, another story here. I'll take this and his spots. Goodbye, Pasiero. NFF insists his time is over. Is his time over? You can find details on the, in the pages of the Vanguard newspaper. And finally, with me, the front page of the Daily Independent now. Only restructuring will fix Nigeria. Ohaneze Pandef, MBF. Uh, they decry high cost of living. And. Uh, the picture there is uh, Governor Fukun State Dakwa Biodun and uh, with the father of the late Herbert Wigui. And uh, it's a sad one there where he, the governor went to pay condolence visit to the family of uh, late Herbert Wigui. And another story here quickly. Despite headwinds, insurance sector CAGR averages 25% growth in five years. Kurewa asks National Assembly to stop wasting money on constitution amendments. Hardship in Nigeria road on the road, Nigeria on the road to Venezuela, PDP governors are saying. All right, Ibrahim. The Daily Times is uh, first with me here. <clears throat> States to National Assembly, we want our own police now. And we can see uh, the front page where we have people protesting. Uh, and then labor mulls one million naira minimum wage. Insecurity, inadequate infrastructure, stalling Nigeria's mining sector growth. That's according to Kalu. No plan to tax online content creators, FRS, page 15. Also, Nigeria, U.S. to investigate death of Access Bank CEO. You can read that up on page 4. And on the bottom strip, it may feel a $6.2 million resumes today. I guess um, what they meant to write is a Mayfield's $6.2 million hearing resumes today. And also uh, above the masthead, equities market gains 100.65 billion naira on first trading day. That's about it for the Daily Times. Next is the Guardian newspaper. 113.8 million undocumented Nigerians raised doubts on population size. CBN informs court of $6.2 million release for 2023 poll. Uh, abduction, father of slain Anambra lawyer slumps, dies. You can read that up on Metro page 12. Alleged $6 billion fraud, you have no power to try me. Ex-minister Agunloye tells EFCC. Reps flays ministry's inability to defend 75 billion Naira COVID-19 expenditure. Wigwe NSIB collaborates with U.S. agency to probe crash. Import duty FX rate raised fourth time in February, now 1,444.56 Naira to the dollar. NLC pegs wage against Naira depreciation amid calls for urgent action against hardship, hunger. Ten years after verdict, women folk still await property inheritance rights in Southeast. Next is First News. Nigeria's foreign reserves decreased to $24 billion record low. That's according to the IMF as Auditor General queries CBN over missing $4.5 billion. Wigwe, Nigeria joins investigation to U.S. helicopter crash as Dangote, Abiodo, others pay condolence visits to his parents. Nigerians suffering from Buhari's policies don't blame Tinobu or Shomole. 40 million Naira fraud, Mama Boko Haram, two others jailed 10 years. Fresh crisis hates Labour Party, as Treasurer asks Abure to account for 3.5 billion Naira. Suffering under Tinobu's government alarming, Kano Emer tells First Lady. Labour considers 1 million Naira as new minimum wage. Police hunt IPUB, ESN attackers, and EMO. UI, Unilag, make top 10 best universities in Africa. FCT police arrest 307 suspected criminals. How Emefele paid $6.2 million or dollars to foreign election observers. 
and then PDP government lament rising cost of living, say Nigeria almost becoming Venezuela. Salient Times is next. CBN fails to account for $4.5 billion in foreign reserves, audit reports, and then kidnapping, corruption, Labour Party advocates for capital punishment for offenders. Amoteco cracks down on kidnappers, uh, kidnappers as influx of criminals surges in Ondo. Nigeria's foreign reserves drop to record low, fall to $24 billion in 2024. New minimum wage should be one million naira, says Ajairo. And uh, newly, wed, newly wed slaughters husband in Niger. Above the mastered, EFCC lacks power to try me. Over $6 billion Mambila saga, ex-minister Olu Agunloe tells court. Actress Sarah Martins claims a man sent her one million naira for looking like his late wife. Kano Emir to Remy Tinobu tell president that there is alarming hunger in the land. This Nigeria is next. MFLA approved $6.2 million payment for foreign election observers, says CBN director. Court declines to hear ex-minister Agunloe's preliminary objection over $6 billion fraud. A 75 billion naira COVID-19 expenditure document worthless. Reps committee tackles Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment insists on submission of proper documents or a fund alleged mismanaged money. FCTA issues two weeks final notice on payments of ground rent. And then uh, Labour Party treasurer asks Aburi to account for 3.5 million uh, 3.5 billion naira fund. Party disagrees. And on the ear of the newspaper, probe Wigwe's death. Rivers Reps Caucus urges U.S. Nigeria. Isiopo community declare. Isiopo community declares seven-day mourning. That's on page seven. Last but not least is platform newspaper. Labor cont contemplates one million naira minimum wage amidst economic challenges. Uh, chaos erupts as drug hawkers attack NAFDAQ officials during anti counterfeit drug raid in Abuja. Oshemele attributes current hardship to Buhari's reckless policies. Nigerians grown over hike in price of cooking gas, consider firewood as alternative and Labour Party in turmoil as Treasurer demands accountability for 3.5 billion naira. And above the master, drama as court watches nude videos of female students extracted from Unical professor's phone. And security experts advocate death penalty as antidote to, to kidnapping banditry. That's about it for the newspapers for review. One of the things, uh, interesting. Uh, is the matter of Labour contemplating one million naira as mean what wage amidst the economic hardship. You see that story it's splashed across almost all the papers this morning. And the question is, um, we see how realistic is one million naira as minimum wage, where for the matter of 18,000 naira, 30,000 naira, states struggled to pay this monies. How are they going to pay one million naira as that, minimum wage? Do you call that minimum are we really maximum wage? Are we really serious with these kinds of conversation? Is the NLC being serious with what is mulling, as it's been described by the papers? Yeah, I think um, to cut him, some, cut him some slacks, you know, he was saying that the prices of things are actually, you know, going up skyrocketing day in day out, and it might get to the level of them, you know, wanting to request for one million naira minimum wage. But then there's so many. There are so many questions. 100,000 naira, 200,000 naira, 300,000 naira, let, let alone 500,000 naira. It's, no matter how bad the situation is, which we pray against, I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure 1 million naira minimum wage. But, you know, people will start thinking, are you, are you people serious what you're thinking about or what you're advocating? So I feel it's just him you know, talking along the line and saying that if things continue to degenerate, we pray that it doesn't get to, my own word now, we pray that it doesn't get to uh, the extent where we'll be requesting, you know, that, you know, as minimum, yeah, wage. as minimum wage, which at that time might be poetry. Mm. So, so he should have the critical conversations. Um, what are the issues? He said, okay, they have you know, had conversation with gov the federal government 
and the federal government is yet to do um, act on the agreements they had. Yeah. They have given 14 days ultimatum to the federal government to act as it is, or they will down tools. Fine. But what are your arguments that you're putting before government? How are you even engaging states on these issues? Right. The government has said, okay, let's look at having some palliative. Some states went forward, you know, to put some measures in place to shock you know, as shock absorbers for the impact of the removal of fuel subsidy, how are you engaging states to ensure that, okay, they are doing something in the immediate while we wait for the federal government? I know that they have, you know, branches across states and different chapters across states. What is the level of engagement with the state governors and state governments as it is? We must begin to ask critical questions. Ask the sub-nationals, what are you doing? Why, let's not focus on the federal government alone. Yes, we know they have a huge chunk of the responsibility. But meet with the governors. What are you doing? To, yes, we have seen some state governments moving around warehouses saying, you know what, we read in the papers, stay away from uh, this warehouse and all of that. They are trying to look at how they can release grains, uh, palliatives that were meant for people stored in some warehouses, some are even selling these things. What is the NLC doing to engage with the state governments to ensure that whatever is being said to be palliative gets to the right people? I'm happy you, you actually took it to the subnational level, and that is very important. That's a mistake we often make as Nigerians. Everything, all our focus has always been on the federal government. And we, all, we oftentimes not talk about the state government. That's why whenever it's time for you know, uh, talking about appropriation bill, the first thing we always look, or look, look onto or talk about or tear apart is a national uh, you know, budget. We don't even talk about the budget at the local level. We don't talk about budget at states, local government, and even the councillors. You know, what exactly are their plans? Because these are the people that are closer to the people. You know, the federal government should just be, you know, over, overall uh, sort of a theme, you know, summarizing everything, you know, for the state. But what about the states, you know, doing things, tailoring things to the needs of the people mm. uh, and according to how, according to your capacity. Uh, for instance, we've seen what the Borno State governor has been doing in terms of, um, you know, sharing grains, you know, reaching out to people to so much so that you find someone who is very young, maybe 10 or so, carrying his own, his own uh, bag of rice. What exactly are the Southwest governors? What are they, what are they doing? What about the governors in the South South? What about governors in the Southeast? What are they doing? What what are the what conversations do they have at their ESCO meetings? You know, so so many. These are critical stakeholders. The NLC, you the NLC so, should so be engaging. NLC, I'm not sure is. how much of engagement they are doing because every time we talk, every time we analyze, every time we ask questions, it's all about the federal government. It should not. It shouldn't be so. We should take this thing down to the local government level and ask questions. We, we've been saying, we've been talking about or advocating local government autonomy. We just seem to just talk, shout, and it looks like nothing is being done. The representatives, exactly what are they uh, advocating, you know, in, 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 whenever they go for the plenaries. So, so many questions to be asked, and we should try to, you know, fine, we are saying that we should, you know, whittle down the power, not whittle down the power of the federal, of the center, but then at least devolve, you know, devolve some of these powers to, to, the, local, uh, to the states, and in short, now we will be talking about the electricity, which the uh, the electricity act bill, which the government uh, the president yeah, act, assented to. I said act bill, the electricity <laughs> act, which the president assented to. So that assent, how long will it take us? We'll have our guests to talk about that. So these are some of the conversations the Labour Party, uh, did I say Labour Party? The NLC should well. Labour Party also says it's an offshoot of Labour Party uh, of the NLC. Uh, but we are focusing on everything, NLC itself. Everything, everything is inside one, one after the other. So what, what are the NLC you know, um, authority, what are they doing? What are they talking about? What conversation, what negotiations are they having with the government at the subnational? It, it, it's, it's very important as it is for me because some, this is why you know, some persons are saying um, NLC backs more than it can bite as it is because certain things and statements that just come um, it's seeming like are you really serious with what you are saying are you do you have you thought through some of these things that you, you are trying to put forward to so make Nigerians see them as if they you know they that is why it's important that before you make certain statements yes you assume it to get to a certain point but what are you doing to ensure that it doesn't get to that point if you are really fighting the interest of people. Yeah. Yes, we know that you have had engagements with government. 
We know that you have sat with the federal government. There was a memorandum of understanding, an agreement reached, and all of that. How have you followed through before now to ensure that the federal government was meeting up with the demands that you made? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if we do not know, yeah. help us understand. Yeah. That is why there's communication. That's communicate right. with us. Communicate with Nigerians. Have a transparent communication so that people know that you are playing your part and the other party is not doing what is necessary. But we'll leave the conversation here now.